I'm here with Brendan Grant, who is a candidate in the Hastings District Council Heratonga Ward by-election. Kia ora, Brendan, and thanks for joining me. Hey, Andrew. Um, thanks for the opportunity. No, all well, good. So, Brendan, just a little bit of background. So, uh, who are you, um, first of all? Where do you come from and what, what is your background? Yeah, well, I... Uh was raised in Havelock North, went to Havelock High School, um, uh, got married, had my first two children here, um, and then moved away for work, um, and recently decided to move back home to where my parents are. Um, as they get older, it's good to be close. I'm the eldest of four kids, and I've got uh, two of my own. And what, what, what line of work are you in? Um, shall we say asset management? Okay. Yep. And um, why have you decided to stand uh, for the Hastings District Council in this uh, in this by election? Well, um, I guess I have a passion for governance, and um, I'd love to represent our community. Um, I think I've got some skills that would be of benefit. So, having an asset management background means. Um, we assess asset condition. Um, we look at the risks using science and data, and um, we determine where to invest capital and maintenance um, accordingly, um, managing expenses. And I think we're moving into tight times with um, high inflation, high interest rates, um, and there's a lot of council debt. Yeah, and um, so uh, do you, are you self-employed or do you work for someone? What, 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 is, your, what is your situation? Yep, um, I'm employed by a company. Okay, um, what company, if, you, if I can ask? I'd rather keep that um, quiet, if that's okay. Okay, um, now in terms of um, what, what is going to be your main... Uh, platform that you stand in on you've mentioned you know um high interest rates what, what what do you think you can bring to the council what is your main platform what is the issue you'd like to see change i guess um i when i think of the dilemmas that the council is facing at present um so maintaining a high level of service with high level of debt is it one another one is we have high living costs and the potential for high rate increases. Um, we have the Cyclone Gabriel recovery. Um, we need to be consistent, fair, and sustainable for future events. Yeah. Um, and affordable housing um, while protecting our productive land. So mm -hmm. those are the thing, key things that I think we're facing and I'd like to be around the table and represent our community on. So now you mentioned um, a cost of living and Cyclone Gabriel, and uh, recently the uh, Napier District, Napier City Council, sorry, um, uh, proposed um, asking their ratepayers for uh, an increase of twenty three point seven percent. Now Hastings District Council could come out with a similar sort of number when they meet later this month. Um, how do you think um, we can reduce uh, uh, that increase and also get what all the way at uh, council debt, which is sitting at 400 million at the moment? Mm. Yeah, and reading your article, um, it's costing us 16 million. And yeah, with that's an interest rate, repayment, yes, yeah. Yeah. With rate increases, that's only going to increase potentially. So I think it's all becoming a little bit tough. Like families are already struggling and these rate rises are just not affordable for a lot of people. So we're going to have to tighten our belt. Um, I guess I've had experience where we talk about in the industry reducing cost without burning the furniture. And I yeah. think humans when challenged in the right way, can come up with creative ways to do more with less. Yeah. Um, we just need to change our focus and um, no more discretionary spending. We've just got to focus on the, the needs. 
From what you've seen, what what are some of the things that council could have not spent money on, and what are some of the th areas that you think there could be cost savings? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, can't think off the top of my head. I, I need a bit more time to consider that one. Yeah, no, fair enough. And um, just in terms of um, in terms of open governance and that, what do you think the way forward for the council is and how would you rate this current council on how they've done? Do you think they've done some things well? Yeah, sure. Um, everybody's got their strengths. Um, I think we've come from a time, you know, with COVID and Cyclone Gabriel. Now we're entering a time where we need to tighten our belt, so we need to adjust to the situation accordingly. And I guess with this opportunity to, with the borough election, we can make sure we've got the right people sitting around the table to make the right decisions going forward. Yeah. And um, in terms of um, w what would you like to get involved in on the council? What would you see? Um, some of the areas that you would like to be involved in if you did get get elected? Yeah, well, I guess I'm keen to be involved in areas where I can, well, I've got experience, so I guess cost management, how can we reduce costs? I think that's going to be a very consuming topic going forward. Yeah, and why why should people vote for you? I mean, uh, um, you, you don't seem to be very well well known, but maybe you are in in different areas. Why should people vote for you? Well, I guess I, I just want people to give me a chance. Um, people say they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. So would people give me a year to show them how much I care for this region and for their future? Yeah. And uh, you hear a lot of talk about the system of local government and people say it's broken, that the model is broken. And um, a lot of councils just cannot keep up with the, um, with the debt levels they've got, especially in this region in the wake of Cyclone Gabriel. Um, how do you think we can change it? Should there be more funding from central government? What is your view on that? Yeah, I think it, it's a range of things. But ultimately, I think in the current environment, we just need to do more with less. We can't just keep coming out with more and more money. So you think it's a it's purely a case of the council needs to tighten its belt, and we need to um, we need to spend less money. Yeah, focus on priorities. We're going to have to go through a risk assessment of what are the the key important things, and really cut back. Yeah. So, so what what do you say to those people who are either? living on a fixed income, the elderly living on a fixed income, or uh, people in the low socioeconomic um, uh, sort of area. Um, what do you say to them about what? how will you um, fight for them and how will you um, advocate for them? Well, it's not going to be a, a quick turnaround. Um, we just need to reduce our expenses and make the rate increases as affordable as possible. Yes, yeah, speaking about um, the model of uh, local government and that, and I don't know if you were here a few years ago, quite a few years ago, there was talk about amalgamation. Do you think um, there should be, uh, that subject should be revisited, amalgamation of the local councils, in particular Napier and Hastings? Um, I think what well, I've seen recently around um, centralisation of um, three waters and things um, has been a little bit concerning. So I think we just need to take stock at the moment. I'm keen for local people to be able to make local decisions 
And if we get too centralised, it takes away the decision making from the local people. So we've had that with the health board. Um, we potentially were going to have that with three waters. I, I don't think I don't want to stomach any more of that at the moment. I'm not saying no in the future, but I think we've seen enough of it lately. And what are your uh, career ambitions? So you're standing for council. Do you see yourself at once at some stage being mayor or anything like that? Or are you just happy to be the council and sit around the table? I guess I would just love the opportunity to give it a go and see if I can um, serve the people well and just see where it goes. Yeah. Brendan Grant, thank you so much for your time and all the best in the upcoming uh, um, by-election. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate the opportunity. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you.